Hey, it's Chris here from Bower Trout Fitters. Today we're going to tie the Stanchev Hexagenia Nymph. I like to use a streamer hook here, but nothing too long, size 6 or size 8. We're going to start a thread wrap here on the hook, just a short base. Then we're going to attach our black bead chain eyes. Now these are a nice, easy way to give the shape of the head that we want without adding too much weight, but it will still help the fly get down a little bit. Just going to secure those in with some figure 8 wraps. Now we're going to tie in our lead OT20 wire. This is going to give us weight to bring the nymph down, but it's also going to help us to build the taper to the body when we dub over it. And I really like doing that for nymphs. Uh, now we're going to just do very loose thread wraps to lock it in place. I don't bother to glue it or anything like that. And then advance the thread down to the bend of the hook. Now we're going to use natural pheasant tail fibers. And I just like to tie the tips straight out about the same distance from where I'm tying it to the distance to the bead head eyes, for example. And uh, now we're going to use a, a rib, just light wire, copper or olive works well. I'm going to tie that in very delicately just with a few wraps. We don't want to build up too much of a base here, so just a couple to lock it in place. Lift up those pheasant tail fibers and then you can lock it down along the hook shank. Now I'm going to go to right under the pheasant tail fibers and I'm going to add my dubbing. I really do like the hands hairs dubbing plus. Uh, there's a little bit of UV ice dub in there and it builds nice chunky bodies. And we're going to with a classic golden sulfur color, which is how hexagenums will normally represent themselves. Now, when you wrap the dubbing on, make sure that you start with it thin and then build it thicker so that we get this nice taper. When we wrap it in, you'll see we get that nice cigar shape. I'm just going to fold over the, the pheasant tail fibers to create a nice shell back here. You can tie those in and clip them off. And now we're going to use our wire. We're going to wrap that up to create a nice gentle rib. So now we've got a good secure body here. I like to wrap up the wire a few more turns so it doesn't slip. It's time for our Swiss straw. I'm actually going to go with a golden color here. Uh, even though we want a darker wing case, I like having a bright contrasting color from when we paint it later. Now Swiss straw right off the reel, I find that it's usually too thick. So I actually cut it right down the middle and then tie in a half section. I like that thickness better. A little bit more dubbing here just over that area that we tied the Swiss straw in. Now it's time for a cool de canard feather. And uh, we're not going to use puffs. We want the actual whole long feather. I'm just going to clip off the heavy part of the stem and I'm going to lay the cool de canard feather down. Uh, I want the curvature to go along with the fly here. Um, now what we want to do is make sure that we get it perfectly central. We want feathers going to both the left and right side of the nymph. So I'm going to tie that down just with a couple of wraps right on top. And then it's very important the distance that you then clip this feather. That stem is going to be fairly hard and the Swiss straw is going to wrap back over itself and it can't wrap through the stem section. So however you cut this, that's going to determine the length of the proportions. And we want about one third of the way down the body. Now that I've clipped that off, I'm going to actually double it up again. So I'm just going to tie that same feather on top of itself just to get a lot of those legs and gills, make it really, really buggy. And again, perfectly central. Make sure those fibers are going to both left and right, laying nice and flat on the fly. Clip that to the exact same distance that we did the first part of the feather. And now we're ready to splay out the cool de canard fibers and then wrap that Swiss straw over itself. This is going to create our wing casing. The Hexagenia nymph, you actually can see the wings through the, the translucent part of this wing case. And it's usually a very dark color, like a brown or black tone. So we're going to make that happen next. But this gives us a really realistic finish. I'm just going to tie that off now in front of the eyes as well, whip finish it to lock it in place. And now we get to be a little bit creative here. So we can use a dubbing brush. We're going to pull out some of those dubbing fibers just to give a nice buggy look, give us those legs there. So I'm going to comb those as well as the cool de canard fibers and just get a nice look to it there. Now it's time to do some painting though. So I'm going to take a black Sharpie and I'm going to start drawing over that Swiss straw. Again, as I said, it's going to have a very dark wing case look, but why I like using a golden Swiss straw color is that I can choose to leave some of that gold showing through and it just gives it a nice modeled, very natural kind of look as opposed to being solid and black. I'm also going to use the Sharpie and I'm going to do bands on the cool de canard feathers that are sticking out. Uh, whenever you look at a Hexagenia's gills, they often have a very dark mottled tone to them. So this really does mimic that very well. And you can see that barring there quite easily. The last step is to coat the wing case. I'm just using a really thick formulation of hard as hull. Uh, but this actually be a really good application for a UV resin. You want to kind of bond it all to the bead head eyes as well, form it into one glossy kind of wing case, and of course, lock down your threads here as well. 
But uh, there you have a Hexagenia nymph. This is very popular back east, uh, but absolutely, I would certainly throw this in the Bow River as well. And keep in mind that you can change up different colors. This could even work as a damselfly nymph kind of representation, or as a large nymph that you'd find in the river for things like large brown mahoganies or green drakes. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please check out BorbertroutFitters.com for all the materials.